and we are live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Fungray New Zealand. Thank you for joining us here on the Comic Trade uh, broadcast on our little uh, Facebook group page, uh, business page, whatever it is. It is what it is. And we like to promote uh, what's going on locally. We like to talk about what's happening in our country and we like to talk about pop culture and everything. Uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, thank you and welcome. Uh, we're also later on after this live stream, we put it over on um, over on YouTube. Tonight we're supposed to have um, the leader of the New Zealand People's Party um, here from Northland join us, but somehow that didn't happen. Hopefully we can try to get that done sometime this week or maybe even next week, depending how we go. It's all, the invite is always open to local politicians to talk about what's you know what they think was of of uh, value to our community here in Fungaray and in Northern, which we both love myself and my um, Australian co-host, but here now in New Zealand. Uh, and the reason I mentioned that is because we have a different perspective on things and not not in the way of like politically or anything, just because it's good to have other people discuss things with us. And this and the whole reason we're doing the political stream sometimes is because it's all Captain Jay. It's his his thing. He wanted to you know, start talking about what's happening in the community. And I know that uh, usually people don't like to discuss, uh, there's two rules when it comes to the dinner table in homes and not just discuss polit politics or religion. And I think that's, it kind of doesn't um, bode well for the future uh, when you're growing up in homes and you don't discuss those things because that, those are two of, one, two of the key components to society. And I think it's uh, when, when you don't discuss those in homes, you kind of uh, leave children whole, unaware of what the world, how the world works, uh, both in religions, uh, of its many religions, and also politicians, and how politics runs the governments and stuff like that. So I, I apologize for we not being able to get um, Billy T. Um, T. Kahika tonight, uh, and, but we are going to talk about the plan B that we had, which was basically what's coming up in seven weeks here in Whangarei, our beautiful own little city in Northland, um, and that is the Fungary French Festival. So part of that is to talk to Captain Jay because he's one of the organizers there um, and um, also a good friend of mine, as you guys have know, he's part of uh, Plan, really organizing, helping us organize things. And not only that, but also he's very arty himself. And, uh, and now this year, uh, Captain Jay, tell us about where it is, how it is, what's going to happen, because I think I um, we haven't had one of these before. Yeah, so uh, I'm, you know, kind of working both from an individual perspective and then also working with a couple of other groups um, kind of in support of Fringe Festival, and Fringe Festival's got its own core, you know, central organising team. But essentially, you know, a Fringe Festival... It's kind of probably two interesting aspects about it um, is that, um, you know, with a lot of festivals, they're put on and they're kind of curated and, and somebody else decides, you know, what's going to show and where and, you know, what it's going to be and so forth. Whereas with um, a fringe festival, typically, uh, you know, the core organising team, they're kind of, you know, creating kind of like an umbrella and providing some of the, the support networks. But really, um, it's up to all of us. It's up to artists, performers, um, uh, you know, a whole range of diverse um, uh, talents in the ta in the city to um, organise um, our own events, and we just kind of then slip those in under the um, the main fringe um, festival organising umbrella. So, what is what is the fringe? I mean, what is it about? Well, I suppose um, you know some of the history of, of fringe festivals are that. Um, uh, you know, especially in a, in a lot of larger cities, they might regularly have some more art orientated um, uh, festivals, summer f festivals, winter festivals. You know, they all happen in, in, um, in across big cities. But um, obviously, um, there were probably, you know, at various times, different artists that felt like that you know, their art wasn't getting an opportunity to get represented because it might be some brand new work, it might be something that's maybe a, quite a challenging topic, uh, it might be um, that, you know, at a, 
at a time when there's more people, you know, out and about and kind of aware that there's things on, that it means that a whole bunch of other pop-up type performances, comedy uh, and so forth can kind of, you know, uh, music and so forth can kind of pop up in other spaces where these things might not normally be occurring. So they might take over, you know, uh, uh, a shop that's for lease or um, use an empty space in town that um, can be repurposed a as a venue. Um, so it allows for a, you know, much greater variety and a lot more um, things which, uh, you know, are really interesting, maybe never seen before. Um, you know, it, it you know, it might be a show that might attract five people or it might attract, you know, 250, you know, who knows? So so we're talking about like um, like small groups, big groups, theater, uh, theater type um, plays, uh, skits, uh, streets, uh, street works, uh, you know, street corner exhibitions. things. Exhibitions. Art. Um, now, it's based at, from what I understand, um, it's based at the quarry and it flows into the rest of the city, right? Uh, so 116 will be the main hub primary venue. Okay. And there's probably about a dozen different venues around town that are all going to be um, spaces that can be used. And, in fact, you know, when people start adding other sp spaces that are being repurposed as venues, you know, we may well end up with, you know, 20 or 30 um, different venues, um, you know, both from regular theatres um, to different bars and clubs and, um, you know, other, um, uh, you know, it's, you know, uh, a really good one for people to look up if they want to get a feel for kind of, you know, the sort of the, the, the feel of it is um, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. It's, it's one of the really famous fringe festivals in the world and no doubt there's probably some promo clip type videos on on that, which should give people a, a reasonably good idea of kind of you know what what the look and feel of it um, you know would be. So, one of the things I mean, like I noticed that there's a lot of empty stores in town at the moment. I wonder if the real real estate people would be able to be willing to, and also the landlords, right, that own those places that you know. Mm -hmm. that, their places um, take over to work out the leases and tenants and all that. I wonder if they, they would be open to um, allowing for this. It's on the weekend of the October 11th and 12th, isn't it? Well, it starts on the um, 10th of October and goes for two weeks through to the 26th of October. And so it actually covers, um, I think, three week, uh, yeah, three weekends, the, the beginning weekend, the middle weekend, and the end weekend. So, so it should give um, should give uh, plenty of people plenty of time to to go out and uh, and, and check what's going on. Nice, and th I mean, yeah. So I think it'll be nice for like local uh, store on um, empty stores, real estate people to just say, look, okay, let's you know, how about you guys just use the space if you because I mean, there's a lot of really good spaces in town. I mean, you look at the one where it used to be like um, I think a two dollar store. Uh, on um, not Robert Street, but the one back from it, uh, by the um, underneath the theatre there, the cinema there, cinema, uh, event cinemas. It's quite a huge area. I mean, I mean, I can just imagine a whole lot of little pop up things in there for that time. It's just, I mean, it's a two, three week period, a week, three weekends, and it'll be nice to have something in there to fill it up and have something there for those two, those three weekends. Um, now. We, we are with plunges over. Over, it's going to have a tent up at um, up at the quarry, which we're quite excited to be a part of that because I think the whole idea is to, uh, behind it is really cool to have like people that aren't, um, you know, aren't really um, at the forefront of what we call art, you know, being able to just pop up and say, This is what we do here, you know, this is what we have on offer. And I think there'll be a lot, hopefully, there'll be a lot of. Uh, people that will do that because I mean from from something like if you look at the, the art the art beat every year we have in January you know I'm looking forward to next year's in art beat as well. There's so many amazing things that sort of uh, little pop up things that happen there. I mean from like uh, solo artists to group artists to musicians to hip hop groups to uh, you know to R and B um, jazz and all that. So if you had, you know like I mean look at Bay of Islands Jazz Festival. I mean that goes off. I mean, every year they have such a huge, you know, 
huge thing for them. So maybe for us, having the Fringe Festival in Whangarei would be really pretty cool to have that every year as well, where the city itself gets behind and goes, hey, let's own this and let's really, you know, focus in on that. Now, is the city providing, um, you know, is the council providing any sort of funding towards this to be on? and Or is it like the groups have to go out and find their own funding? Um. So I believe there was an article in the paper. They did get um, quite a um, generous grant, um, uh, which was uh, in the paper uh, a few weeks ago. And um, it makes a lot of sense uh, that, you know, that funding was provided because, you know, to organise this type of event and to create this umbrella and, and, and bring it all together uh you know really is going to require a, a lot of people's time and there's also going to be a lot of um, volunteer time and then you know there's all of the time from all of the other different venues and different performers so uh you know it really is a great opportunity and hence why i think you know um you know pretty one of many aspects as, as to pretty why that funding was granted is uh you know a fringe festival has got a couple of you know very real benefits it it really does provide a great platform for a lot of people to see um, a lot of artists work, you know, no matter whether, you know, they're working in the art of comedy or, um, you know, visual art or in performance or theatre, musicians. Uh, it really provides a great platform for lots of these people to be able to share what they've been working on. Um, uh, and also um, even for you know, potentially established artists, it also provides them an opportunity to do something different than what they might normally be working on. Um, you know, with with um, a fringe festival, it provides kind of like a bit of a safe sort of space for lots of, um, you know, unusual, very um, new, unpolished, even perhaps very raw kind of work to be out there and to, and for it to be safe such that if someone, you know, might potentially feel offended by something, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's in a way, you know, um, with fringe, it's like, you know, expect that maybe something that you might, um, go and see or hear or do, you know, might be a little bit uncomfortable, you know, and, right. and actually often when we see a good movie or a, or a really, you know, a um, good piece of um, theatre or play that, um, you know, there is a level that sometimes whereby you do want to actually, you know, have it, you know, uh, one way of looking at art is that art, you know, kind of gets people to look at the world a little bit differently from how they might have looked at it before they saw a painting, a sculpture, a, a show and so forth. Yeah. Uh, and also, um you know, one of the things that Fringe does is that it brings a lot of activity. So it's going to, you know, um, all things going well and pretty fingers crossed it. It could well be a really great um, way of spurring the local economy up here um, as it may well be a period where it's going to be a bit warmer. Um, yeah. It provides a really good opportunity for lots of businesses to, to really take advantage of, um, you know, hopefully the, the good crowds of people that will get into town on a really good kind of like high traffic regular basis through that two weeks, you know, um, even, you know, often in town, you know, it's really quiet on like Sundays and Monday, Tuesday, and then it doesn't start to kind of ramp up again until like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, whereas the Fringe Festival is really, you know, operating, you know, the whole of those two weeks and, and you know, you're often getting lots of people that are probably coming into town, you know, to catch a couple of nights or one night off shows and then other people are coming in and out. We may even see all the hotels booked out. Who knows? Yeah, uh, that's the thing we really need right now is a boost the economy, um, you know, because I know especially with, like, I mean, of course, we had the lockdown early on and then we had the flooding. And the flooding really, really, really cost the city a lot, not only just individuals with, uh, you know, having uh, washouts of their, um, you know, their properties, um, but also those, you know, the city centre, there's been um, property damage that, you know, that's that's happened and um, product damage that's happened and all that. I mean, people think that when you have insurance, it's paid out straight away. A lot of time it takes months to get that done. And so in that in that meantime, you need money to go in there and products to be sold, but you know it costs costs a um, business person so much and their employees as well trying to raise that. And I think 
you're right on this. And you, of course, you know this, but uh, for those not listening, I mean, they're just listening to us about this is that whenever you have these functions and festivals coming to town, there is this whole monetary uh, benefit to the city. You may not like what's happening, but you, or what you, you know, might not like the artists or something, like that, but every time that comes into the city, there are folks that like it and there are actual, well, we say the groupies that follow them around that actually come and watch them as well. And also, not only that, but you learn new things. But there's there's food gets sold. There's uh, you know there's um, grocery stores get, and this is all about the whole economy, like employment. Um, people get paid, and um, you know, um, like you were saying, but the hotels and stuff. Not only that, people probably get billeted out as well because not you know not everybody wants to live in a hotel for that weekend. So there'll be people on you know on on online going, hey, do you have a room? available or do you have a couch free for this time that we can you know couch surf for the two weeks and we'll give you you know so much money for that time we're there like they used to do you know like when they had the world cup people were staying in people's homes while they left the because they went into rugby so they left the city went somewhere else for a holiday for that time and rented out the house and so there is this opportunity that for individuals to you know earn some from this as well but the great thing is that it, it props up the um, the community and the creative side as well, and the arts and music and everything that that, that incorporates. I mean, like we've got um, such such amazing uh, work that goes in. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is actually running something like this, putting this on. A lot of times, people don't realize the cost of that goes into that, and why there is a need for grants from councils for things like this. I know when we we're doing. There is all this running around we do year round um, and um, of pro promoting, of talking, of putting it all together. But there's hours and hours and hours of volunteer work that goes into actually, you know, putting it all together. And, and and not only that, but when you're running something like the French, it's a huge event, right? So you got so many groups you got to deal with, so many artists you got to deal with, so many musicians, uh, you got to deal with so, uh, so many community groups, and all that gets taken up with time that uh, you know. That is valued. I mean, if you put a monetary value on this, it's not, it's uh, um, astronomical because, uh, you know, you've got all these meetings that happen. They're not only that, you got to get around to actually uh, promoting it. And the other thing is that then you got to get uh, printed material to also promote to show who's going, who's coming where. But one of the other things about um, our day and age is that we're able, because of social media, we're able to do that. Now, you guys, talking to which, segue into that, you guys have an uh, Instagram page. For, for this uh for the french festival it's from our french festival isn't it on instagram or whoever's running the instagram uh page there and i see the um the images there promoting this different groups so how many groups are there and are there other different instagram page i mean sorry social media group pages that you have got going on as part of this yeah well that's pretty uh you know a better question for the actual fringe team um uh, obviously um you know what they've done is to encourage um, you know, the different participants to, you know, share with them the sorts of events that, that we're all planning kind of independently. Um, and that's and that's the great role that um, they're playing is to, is to be able to um, obviously, um, you know, have a central hub for ticketing. You know, they've got the Fringe Festival uh, website up and running. They've got their social media channels. So, yeah, it looks like they're doing a fantastic job at um, starting to, you know, promote the event and also, um, you know, helping all the, you know, various artists and performers who are, um, you know, looking to be part of it. Do you, um, how many, how many groups have um, put their names down so far for this, uh, from artists? Are you aware? Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. That's probably once again for the Fringe Festival and um, I'm not too sure if they've been, you um, um, kind of publicizing um you know um you know how many events are kind of shaping up you know kind of so far um but hopefully it's a lot let me just check the instagram page so i can get the page uh, name right here um so people can check that out let me see uh it's fringe because i've been i've been following the um, like the um the groups have been putting up so it's been really cool seeing that every day seeing what new groups are coming up on that and um, it's, yeah, it, there is a lot. And this is what really excites me is because there's so many um, different uh, groups that are 
a part of this. Right, so it's Whangarei French on Instagram. So um, let's put that up there. That's Whangarei French. I mean, that's very simple. I mean, it's so here we go. Um, the page was put up in a right here we go. So I keep thinking that 2020 was last year. Every time I look at 2020, it's like, oh, it's, it's you know, it's it's last year. And I think, oh, that page was put up last year, but no, no. So, um, so you've also they've also got a link by um, link in bio at French, uh, from very French. Um, so if you're not following Fungary French, it's worthwhile following now so you can get aware, um, become aware of what's happening with that on Instagram. So, yep. So you got it starts off with uh, with Love Bug presents. Um, there was a there's an event at 116 on October uh, Saturday October the 10th with um, DJs Gabriel Gonzalez, a little man big and Aza. So that's at 116 Bank Street. Uh, now that's that's the evening. That'll be like the showcase on the evening there. I guess, and then you got all these different events throughout the day to start off. Now, isn't that cool? Like, I mean, it's you've got all, all day people out there doing stuff, and then suddenly you go, okay, what are we going to do tonight? Let's have let's have a uh, you know let's have a house um, house music all night long, you know, just celebrate the whole event. And you not a, the cool thing is that you get to meet meet and mingle all those artists and not only, and all the spectators and people who event and talk about the day and just chill out and enjoy themselves. I mean, that's a cool thing. Um, now, have you have you been involved in French festivals overseas or, you know, over in Oz? No, not specifically uh, fringe festivals um, uh, or at least not, um, you know, sort of like city-based fringe festivals. So I've been to lots of different festivals around the world Um uh, which, you know, in effect are, are kind of like a, a, a version of fringe festivals in their own right. It's just that, um, you know, they're typically done out in the bush somewhere or in a forest or in a desert, um, you know, anywhere from, you know, 500 people to 80,000 people. So um, have been involved in, in lots of fringe type um, festivals and, and events and I'm really looking uh, forward to this one and I really think that um, as tickets become available for different events um, people should really um, you know kind of get in and book early um, because uh, I think um, we'll find that the interest um, is quite great and that um, tickets will sell out fast for, for certain events um, and I know that the Fringe Festival team have also got their website up and running, which is really the main way that I suppose people should, should um, you know, uh, in addition to social media, um, mm. keep up to date. So that's uh, fongarefringe.co.nz. Um, and they've got a really, um, really nice snazzy website that they've uh, already got up and running there. And it's um, got really helpful information also for... Um, not only um, people attending events, but also for artists who are still thinking about um, doing something during that fringe period. Uh, get in touch with the with the team over there. I was just going to check out uh, Event Finder and see what they've got set up there as well. So now, is that event um, is the tickets available through one one six or is it through um, Event Finder? Um, my understanding is that people will be able to um, access um, the tickets online um, through um, a link on the Whangarei Fringe um, Festival website, mm -hmm. and uh, and and also I believe that they'll um, be having like a bit of a box office up at one one six as well. Um, right. But I suppose people should probably you know get their tickets online you know where where they can. Mm -hmm. So um, the French Festival, um, there's an event on Friday night on the 10th, oh, sorry, on the 9th of October at uh, where are we? the Quarry Arts Centre. This is called Artquake, Quirk, and um, that's at 21 Selwyn Ave, and that's uh, that's put on by the, um, as part of the French, as uh, part of the um, Fungary Arts Centre, I mean, sorry, Quarry, Quarry Arts Centre. And that's going towards uh, from yeah from 10th to 14th, all the way uh, sorry from the 9th all the way to 24th. So that's one of the events there uh, that they've got going on. And it's called um, a group show 
strange and delicious objects from the French. Now, are you part of that one? Um, do you have a piece in there or? Yeah, so we're going to be helping to um, organize that exhibition and um, we've already been starting to get um, some really interesting work um, uh, come through. Um, so people have got until the end of August to put pieces, um, send us uh, um, pictures of, of pieces and uh, then we'll sit down and, and, and work out the works that we can include um, in the show and th um, then have the opening on the uh Friday 9th of October, which is basically just the day before Fringe officially um, starts. So it's almost kind of like a like a um, a pre 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 opening party. Um, so it'd be great to uh, get a lot of people down there, look at the art. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the works will be for sale, and 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 it should hopefully be work which is uh, a bit different from. Uh, you know what what people might normally expect from a from an art gallery show. Mm. I've been thinking about putting one in, <laughs> and I've just been like, do I finish this? How do I finish this? Am I going to have a time time to finish? It? So I'm just so glad to, that you've just said, <laughs> you know, until the end of the month, right? So, so yeah, the work doesn't have to be uh, finished, but uh, you know, because we'll need the the works in um, by the end of September. Um, but even if people have got you know a concept or an idea or a part finished piece that they're you know progressing um, towards getting finished, then um, send that through. Excellent. Right. So not only is so there's not only this um, artworks itself, um, pen and paper type thing or paintbrush. But we got live in person events, comedy, um, music, performances, bands. I I, I love the idea that um, it, it, I think the best thing to say anything goes right, and um, it's like so. There's it's kind of um, be, to be come with open minds and not be sort of like um, closed minded about these things because this is the, the fringe. And I think that's that's the whole idea of the fridge is that you've got so much. Well, to me anyway, is that just be, have an open mind about what you see, and um, and also there will be uh, like there'll be pamphlets saying what's going to be on, so you don't you can pick and choose to be there. Like any festivals, be at which ones you want to be at and enjoy. And I think I'm I'm looking forward to it because it's it's just such a great event to have in our city, and um, and. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a great to our economy. And I'm always concerned when, when there's something, I'm always actually not concerned, but I'm actually always excited when there's something of benefit to the community financially, because it means that then it's beneficial to people in the community financially, which means it's good for the families living in that community. And so, and also to people who are working in that community to provide for, like we said, food, tea, tea and coffee, you know, cakes and biscuits, all those little, you know, uh, little uh, caravan uh, um, trailers, uh, trailer food things, uh, ice blocks for the kids, all that pizzas, all that that comes out to these events. Because, of course, there's the other facet of that is actually providing food for the people that are actually going to go there. So you can have all these van food vans that are around town can actually show up at these places and provide. Of course, at the quarry, they have their own cafe. Uh, and also at, at um, also at uh, one one six, they also have their own cafe with uh, Ant there running his Luna Cafe there. So, you know these these places, some of them already have their food provisions, but other places that won't have them, you'll have the old um, um, probably you know most likely we'll see those food um, vents parked up providing food, so you're not going to go hungry while you're waiting or not going to go thirsty. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm not going to use up any more of your time, but give us. Yeah, give us your last words for tonight uh, about the Fringe. Look, I think what you know, there's two things about the Fringe Festival. You know, uh, uh, in addition to what we've been talking about, that's going to be really great for Whangarei. I think that you know, Fringe festivals can also generate ongoing interest in these types of events and these types of performances and so forth. So we may well see that. Um, you know, there might actually be new little venues. There might be, you know, new, more regular things that kind of pop up um, 
um, around town. And, uh, you know, it, it's also a great way to start to really kind of invite people, um, you know, in Northland to, to come and um, spend a bit more time um, supporting the arts, uh, because it really then becomes this really beautiful cycle that if we're supporting our local artists, um, and then, of course, if our local businesses are being supported and our venues are being supported, that it has then really, really good um, kind of domino effect, you know, throughout Northland, um, which is a bit different from, you know, like when shows come to town um, from from outside of Northland, then you know sometimes you know th there's a lot of money which is which is made by the show, um, but then you know they they leave town. And um, and so the, the the broader community doesn't get the, the full overall benefit of something you know like a two week festival. So um, it's really exciting for uh, Northland. It's very exciting for lots of artists, and it's very exciting for um, you know summer in Whangarei as we um, uh, will probably have a much more energised environment. Um, you know um, after the Fringe Festival, I, I think for many of us, we'll we'll probably not want it to end. Excellent. Right, so that's all we have for tonight. Uh, apologies again for not, uh, yeah, not being able to do the um, political interview. Uh, so thank you everyone who's been watching our show and following us uh, over the past few months. But also, we try to put this on every week as when possible. But um, hopefully, um, you've enjoyed what we talked about, and I'm really looking for what's coming up with the French. And like I said, check out their website uh, from our French. .co.nz, check out the Instagram. Um, um, they most likely have a Twitter page. But do check out what's going on and what's coming up because it's it's beneficial to our community, as we've said. And um, and also the long-term benefits. Hopefully we can do this every year. Um, but the first one's got to be successful enough to make it work. So, and, and well back. done to the, uh, to the yeah. Fenray, uh, Fringe Festival team. Um, they're doing an awesome job. Awesome. Hopefully we might, I mean, coming up, we might be able to get those guys on as well to talk about. Uh, the that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. You know, let's, let's hear from the, the heart of the, uh, the, the fringe, the fringe machine. Excellent. You, I'll let you take care of that one since you're part of that group. So hopefully they can, you know, tell us about what the other um, amazing groups that are going to be upcoming into our city. And as always, Kakite Ano, thank you for joining us and wherever you are, keep well. And um, have a good one until next time. From myself, Malfunction, and Captain J, see you next time.